ShireSociety.com. Join up and move to New Hampshire for more freedom. I heard that there was going to be some sort of a free speech zone that protesters were going to be required to be in. Is that correct? It's going to be back on that side over there. I think I saw the map. Now, what will happen to a demonstrator if they have a sign and they're not inside that zone? Okay, so that's me in early 2017, standing up just a little bit for the human rights of Antifa protesters. Just in case you were wondering if I really will stand up for everyone's human rights. Well, they were only very slightly and very potentially violated at this point. Some police were talking about confining them to a free speech zone. Now, I will continue standing up for the human rights of Antifa folks and Stalin and Slobodan Milosevic if I have to. <laughs> but in this case, like so many, I didn't get much thanks for it. The anti-fascists, as they call themselves, not very accurately, seem to be the number one threat to free speech in America today, although they may be number two behind the government when you really add it all up. Anyway, I sort of had an idea for calling their bluff. After hearing all the, uh, the stories from uh, Liberty activists, New Hampshire Liberty activists who tried to attend the Boston free speech rally and reported back, I, I was really disturbed by what I heard. You know, massive numbers of people coming out to try and s sort of protest a speech or, or in some cases to s try to stop a speech. It was certainly, this is what was happening here at this event that I attended, the Milo Yiannopoulos at the speech. The black bloc types were attempting to stop the speech from happening. Well, what if uh, in New Hampshire, and I'm not logistically well suited to do this right now, but I, I can at least throw the idea out there. What about a debate in some appropriate New Hampshire park, public park, where the first person invited is, uh, you know, uh, some representative of Antifa, maybe whoever runs the Antifa website in New Hampshire, if, if there is one, or the nearest Antifa website and or Facebook group. First person invited to the debate is one of them, and then you, divide, you invite one of their enemies, uh, which could be almost anyone, but not necessarily a controversial figure, just someone who's against many of the things that the Antifa are doing. Call that as a debate and see if they come and throw rocks at that. If they do, they lose. If they don't, they lose. Or at least we win. Whereas if they show up and they have to face uh, direct questioning, um, they'll they'll either have to take a ma their mask off or they will uh, have to look like uh, they're anti-transparency. But nothing here is going to happen. We're all circle jerking if we stand here. Now, if somehow this triggers, you know, thousands of people descending on a location, again, we win. Because we make, we make this a, a New Hampshire libertarian event, a New Hampshire liberty activist event designed to promote, you know, migration to New Hampshire. If no one shows up except a small number of people, then it just provides a great contrast as to how much safer it is in New Hampshire. Again, either way, you win. And actually, if the Antifa win, that's not a problem either. I mean, depending on what you mean by win. We all want them to win when it comes to stamping out real fascism, or at least making it so that it doesn't have any power. Yeah, and I think it's time to uh, give, the, give these folks a no-excuses chance to put a human face on themselves. Sometimes when you put that face on yourself, you start to really have one. Again, I'm not the, the best person to do it. I, I briefly considered maybe trying to do it, but I just do not like to organize events. I do it almost only in self-defense. I've gotten so much better at operating alone. But, uh, you know, if you push something like this forward, uh, you can expect some support from me. Some type of concrete support unless you make it impractical somehow, like by scheduling it two days from now. That won't work. And it's probably not a problem we're going to have. Somewhere in here, there should probably be elements. I don't know if you read about this guy. I think there was an article about him in the New York Times. But there's this uh, black guy in the South who has befriended and evacuated 300 people 
from the Klan. I didn't know there were 300 people in the Klan. But he apparently evacuated that many, and he, he like collects their robes as trophies, like war trophies, except it's not a war. It's just him going out and making friends and asking people, how can you hate me if you don't even know me? Well, that seems like a good idea, a good approach with Antifa folks. I wonder if it might work with government folk. Yeah, yet another idea I'm not very well configured to uh, execute, since I'm better at being an enemy, <laughs> a good enemy, than a friend. I make a first-rate enemy. May all your enemies be like me. Oh, and another idea. At the event, you could have a donation jar, and the donations could be sent to uh, real victims of real Nazis. Uh, of course, uh, they're, they're hard to find, but if you, I guess if you'd go to Western Herzegovina, uh, or parts of Bosnia, you can find people who were, um, uh, their families were damaged by the Ustasha, who, you know, who were the uh, modern-day Nazis that were operating in uh, Yugoslavia in, uh, or former Yugoslavia in the mid-90s. Or the money could go to some uh, uh, Holocaust museum that's not too anti-liberty. Maybe they all are not too anti-liberty. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.